Hello, my name is Gloria Loffman and I'm from Australia. I'm over here teaching at the NEC show, which is indeed an honour for me to, to come over here to teach at such a, a wonderful event. Uh, I've also got an exhibition of my work and uh, later on we'll go and visit the gallery to see some of my larger landscape pieces. In Australia I'm known for my big landscape quilts, usually in very bright colours. Uh, I enjoy making quilts that are about the, uh, the environment, the, the trees and the outback of Australia. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the process that I use and uh, we're going to have a look at uh, this quilt here. It's called Escape to the Rainforest and uh, I'm just going to run through some of the techniques that I have used to make this quilt and that I share with my students in my classes. First of all, we're going to look at the background and the background starts off as one white piece of fabric. We then paint it and sponge it to give a feeling of foliage. Then we're going to look at painting a few trees in the background straight onto that surface. So some of these trees that are here are actually just painted onto the background so that they stay in the background. Then we're going to look at some of the trees that are in the foreground. Some of them will create from uh, commercial fabrics or hand dyed fabrics, but the ones that we are going to really look at at this stage are the ones that we're going to paint and uh, once again using white fabric. That way we can get all lots of wonderful textures and colours in there which later on we can embroider. Once we've painted the trees, we then apply them, fuse them on the surface and then we would embroider them using our machine embroidery skills. Now if you were in one of my classes then we would spend quite a bit of time experimenting with different threads and trying different techniques but in this short video we're just looking at the painting techniques for the background. Choose a piece of white fabric and cut it just a little bit bigger than the background of your quilt. Now it can be any weight um, but just a mid-weight white cotton fabric is quite suitable. So cut your piece of fabric. The next thing you do is that you wet it and then we're going to smooth it out on a sheet of plastic. Now when you smooth it out you don't want any air bubbles underneath and if you get a good suction between the fabric and your sheet of plastic underneath it makes for a very easy surface to work on. Now I've already poured the paint into these cups and I've watered it down slightly so that we're ready to begin. Now when you're in the rainforest the light source is at the top of the picture. So we're going to apply just a, a pale yellow paint to the top. I'm using a sponge brush so it's more like painting a house than painting a picture. So applying the paint just movements across, strokes across the fabric and uh, just gradually working down. Because the paint is transparent we need to put on the uh, paler colours first and then gradually add our other colours. A little bit of pale yellow to begin with and then it's time to add some more colour. So let's move on to some blue. Often I use the same brush because I like the effect of multi colours on the brush. Once again the blue has been uh, watered down a little bit and you can see when it's applied that we can still see some of the yellow through because of the transparency. So at this stage we're just creating a flat background that uh, we're going to do a little bit more work on in a moment to make it look more like the uh, back of a rainforest. We may need to add a little bit of white there if we've got some harsh lines just to smooth it all in together. If you feel there's a little bit too much uh, paint on the surface, uh, change to another dry brush and then you can take some of that surface paint back off again. But at this stage I'm just looking for a smooth surface uh, in the background. The next phase is to let it dry. Now normally you would take it outside on a beautiful Australian sunny day and it will dry very quickly and then the next step is to iron it and it's permanent.
Just looking at the paint, it's uh, a non-toxic non paint. It's uh, water-based, so it washes up easily. And uh, we actually do water it down when we're using it. And then we just need to heat set it with the iron for it to become permanent. This, this particular piece of fabric I painted yesterday so that it was dry, ready for us to continue. Now, the next step is that we're going to sponge some paint on the surface to give lots of texture. Because we've got a light background, we'll still get the effect of the light coming through from the back. Now, I'm just going to tip the paint concentrated onto my wonderful palette here, an ice cream container lid, and uh, ready to sponge on. I would normally put two, three different colours on and I'll blend them as I'm sponging them onto the surface. So we've got some golden yellow, we've got some violet and we'll uh, add a little bit more blue to what we're doing because of course our yellow and our blue make green. Our golden yellow and our purple make a dirty olive green or brown colour and we obviously see lots of those colours in the rainforest. Picking up the colour now with our sea sponge, just get rid of some of the excess to start off with and you can see all the beautiful colours that you can come up with. We're now going to sponge that on the surface. Start off with a, a nice gentle touch. I find that students in classes are very tentative when they first start off with this process but they enjoy it so much it's hard to get them to stop. So, uh, and it is always hard to know when to stop. So you'll notice that the colours are different depending on the, the paint that I pick up. But it can create a lovely textured background and an easy, and it's very easy to do. We would naturally have the lighter colours up near the sky at the, the top of the forest and some of the darker ones down below where we don't get much light. So picking up mainly my purples and my blues, bringing them down into the, into the bottom of the forest. Okay, so let's just get a little bit more on. I'm changing colours in different areas, picking up the yellows, the greens, the violets, so that we've got some changes of colour in our background.